and welcome to Herbal History. In this episode, we'll cover the history and use of shampoo, ginger. Like in previous episodes, you'll discuss its botany first, followed by historical uses, and finally cover some experiments to see what further uses this plant can have. Let's get started. Shampoo. Ginger is part of the genus Zingabar, and the species name is called Zingabar Zimmerbet. It's a large perennial plant with a tuberous root system, found growing in damp-shaped parts of Southeast Asia. The plant is believed to be native to India and Malaysia. This plant produces long stems that have alternating leaves, with flower stems that have pine cone-shaped bracts that contain actual flowers within the plant. These bracts are typically red or pink in coloration, but the business end, so to speak, would be the large scaly root system that is thick and tuberous. It is this root system that is used to make all products that we consume when it comes to shampoo ginger, both as an aromatic spice slash flavoring agent and as a medicinal plant. Now on to the historical uses of this plant. This plant has historically been used as a shampoo plant via the oils produced by the cones on the flower stems. It's also extensively used as a flavoring agent and appetizer in Malaysian and Indian food. It is also used extensively in Asian, Indian, Chinese, and Arabic traditional medicines since the ancient times. The most common use of the rhizome of this plant in terms of medicine is as a mild anti-inflammatory painkiller alongside digestive system ailments. It was used medicinally in different ways by different cultures. The Malaysians, for instance, typically used fresh or boiled rhizomes as a medication itself. The Chinese macerated the rhizomes and mixed it with alcohol. The ancient Indians mixed it with another species of plant called Morinda certifolia. Now on to the medical trials to ascertain potential uses in the future for shampoo. An experiment by the paper referenced was done to find out the acute toxicity of ginger extract. The ginger extract was fed to broiler chickens at 2000 mg per kilogram body weight. After one hour, they showed signs of appetite loss, and after 14 days, chicken fatalities began showing. So do not consume 2000 mg per kilogram of body weight of ginger. Now on to its potential as an anti-pain medication slash pain numbing medication. In a rat study, they found that the ASA, the control drug, reduced pain by 60% consistently, while the anti-pain effects of shampoo had a wide range of effectiveness. The 30 mg per kilogram of ginger extract reduced the pain by 60 to 75 percent, while the 300 mg per kilogram reduced it between 42 to 66 percent, showing a broader range of effectiveness within this plant chemistry. Now onto the anti-fever properties studied in shampoo. The researchers found that with doses of 25, 50, and 100 mg per kilogram in rat studies, that there was a dose-dependent decrease in body temperature through the use of shampoo, but no standard reference drugs were used as controls, so whatever potential it has is unknown. Yet another test with rats suggested that doses of 50 mg per kilogram and 500 mg per kilogram did not cause, so that's a good thing, talk about the studies done to see if it's useful for treating Giardia in pets and its use as a potential diabetic medicine. Now on to the easy one first. They tested the effects of shampoo alongside 12 other medicinal plants as well as a standard drug to see if ginger was effective at treating Giardia. It was not. In the methylated extraction and the aqueous extraction, in the concentrated extraction, it showed effects moderately less than the most effective medicinal plant. And even then, the, the microbial colonies were still actively growing in the plant-based extracts, just at a slower rate. Now on to the anti-mosquito larvae 
potential that ginger may or may not have. One species of mosquito, called A.E. aegypti, has an insecticide resistant strain and a non-resistant strain. The susceptible strain seemed to require a concentration of 71 parts per million to have a lethal dose for killing 99% of that population. It was lower in the resistance strain of that same species, requiring only 53.1 ppm. With two other species mosquito, the maximum level needed to kill 99% of the population is 68.7 ppm. But unfortunately, they did not compare it with a regular control group insecticide, so we cannot confirm how meaningful the data actually is. Well, that concludes this video. Thank you for watching.